This is Democracy Now!, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Anti-war protests are continuing in Russia. A local monitoring group says over 5,000 people were arrested by police across 69 Russian cities Sunday. This comes as part of a sweeping crackdown on civil society and the press. Russian President Vladimir Putin has signed a new law to impose jail terms of up to 15 years for spreading so-called false information about the military or its activity in Ukraine. The prominent independent newspaper Novaya Gazeta said it was removing its reporting on the invasion because of censorship. The paper's editor, Dmitry Muratov, was one of the recipients of the 2020 Nobel Peace Prize just a few months ago. In a message to its readers, the paper said, quote, military censorship in Russia has quickly moved into a new phase. From the threat of blocking and closing publications almost fully implemented, it's moved to the threat of criminal prosecution of both journalists and citizens who spread information about military hostilities that's different from the press releases of the ministry of defense, unquote. On Thursday, independent Russian channel TV Rain went off the air with its staff walking off set saying no to war. Non-Russian news outlets, including CNN, ABC, CBS, Bloomberg and BBC, have moved to limit their activity in Russia. This comes as Russia becomes increasingly economically isolated. Visa and MasterCard have become the last corporations to cut or the latest corporations to cut or reduce ties to Russia. We're joined now by Ilya Budryatkis. Um, he is a Russian historian and political writer. He's the author of the award-winning book Dissidents Among Dissidents, Ideology, Politics and the Left in Post-Soviet Russia. We last spoke to him from Moscow in February. He's since left Russia. Um, welcome back to Democracy Now!, Ilya. If you can talk about the crackdown on the protests and the press. Again, at this point, I think it's over 13,000 people have been arrested across Russia for protesting. Yeah. So, um, in fact, we're entering the, the new political reality in, uh, in, uh, in, in Russia for now, because all the previous um, let's say, laws of the game, uh, they're not working. And uh, if before, uh, just months, two months ago, you could be arrested uh, for the participation in the street demonstration and just uh, spent uh, some days in uh, prison uh, or uh, pay uh, some fine. Uh, for now, uh, if you're uh, arrested or uh, if you just spread some information which is different from the official point of view, uh, you could be imprisoned for, uh, for years. And uh, that is the new situation, that's a new level of risk uh, for, uh, for the protest movement uh, in Russia. And of course, those people uh, who just yesterday uh, came to the streets of the main Russian cities, they're extremely, uh, extremely brave. And uh, I think uh, they should be a part of the, the heroic part of the history of the uh, global anti-war movements. Can you talk about who the people are who are protesting um, and how much information is getting out about these protests all over Russia right now, despite the crackdown on the press? Uh, so uh, most of these people, they're young people. Uh, they're, let's say, some students or, or just uh, young people under 25. Um, and uh, unfortunately, uh, the uh, the those part of the population which actively uh, oppose the the war, uh, it's uh, is is very let's say uh, li uh, limited in the terms of uh, generations uh, and in the terms of uh, access to the information, uh, because as probably was uh, told already in your 
programs in uh, in Russian official media, the uh, the picture of uh, reality, the picture of what uh, what is happening uh, in uh, Ukraine is totally different. It's uh, like an alternative reality. There is no images of bombings uh, of uh, the Ukrainian cities. Uh, there is no even the any. Uh, true information uh, about the actions of the uh, Russian military uh, units uh, in uh, Ukraine. So, in fact, most of population uh, have, uh, unfortunately, a very, uh, a very wrong uh, understanding of what is really uh, going on there. So, uh, those uh, who came um, to the protests uh, uh, last days, uh, they mostly get uh, the alternative uh, information from uh, some uh, social media, which are still accessible in uh, uh, in country, or uh, from uh, from the uh, uh, let's say alternative uh, oppositional uh, websites, uh, which most of them uh, which are now blocked, but you still can access them uh, using the uh, VPN uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. Um, the significance of uh, Dmitry Muratov, who won the 2021 Nobel Peace Prize, is newspaper Gazeta, uh, uh, Novaya Gazeta, saying um, they're just not going to report it because of the censorship. Yes, ab absolutely. So you have uh, you have a new situation with the with the censorship, and. Uh, as you know, probably the even the term uh, war or the term invasion, uh, they uh, they described as the disinformation or the fake news uh, in uh, in Russia, and you could be uh, according to the new law uh, just adopted by the um, by the parliament a couple of days ago, uh, you can be imprisoned of up to 15 years uh, for the distribution of uh, such uh, uh, disinformation. Yes, so, uh, and uh, already we have uh, criminal uh, investigations um, uh, on uh, people who not just uh, write something uh, in this way, yeah, but uh, even repost uh, some, uh, some uh, news and social media uh, which, uh, uh, which call this war uh, a war. Mm -hmm. Yeah, war so or is, invasion. You can't use those words. Or 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 invasion. Yes, you also can't use the term uh, term invasion. You can use only the term uh, special military uh, peacekeeping operation, and also you can't uh, spread any alternative uh, information of the losses of the Russian army, um, and you only can use the official information from the Russian Ministry of uh, Defense. And the difference between these numbers, uh, so if you look on uh, the numbers reported by uh, Ukrainian side and the numbers reported by Russian side, they are, they are so different so different uh, from each other. Uh, so just a couple of days ago, uh, Russian Ministry of Defense uh, first time uh, officially recognized that uh, around 500 uh, Russian uh, soldiers, uh, soldiers already died in Ukraine. Uh, so in on Ukrainian sources, uh, you have uh, the information that more than 7,000 uh, all, all, uh, Russian soldiers already already were killed, and of course you can't uh, uh, you can't um, continue this um, uh, this uh, censorship uh, for a long period of time because all these uh, soldiers who already died uh, in uh, Ukraine, all these Russian soldiers, they have their relatives, uh, they have their families in the different areas of uh, Russian Federation, and of course uh, this uh, this is starting to uh, you know to form some uh, different uh, different point of view. Uh, in among, uh, 
Uh, on some are, pe part of, part are people the hearing the pleas of Ukrainians? Like on Friday, uh, President Zelensky appealed to Russians to stage protests over Russian forces' uh, seizure of Europe's largest nuclear power plant, um, uh, Zaporizhia. Now thousands of Ukrainians are fleeing that area. Uh, then you've got the Ukrainians telling the Russian mothers to come pick up their soldier sons in Ukraine. Are you hearing these pleas? Are they hearing? in Russia? Uh, unfortunately, as I, as I said before, uh, the access to the information is, uh, is very limited. Yeah, and uh, uh, I think that this address by Zelensky uh, also was distributed only around those uh, who have this access to the alternative um, information to that. Ilya, we media. don't have much time, and I want to get to a few points. Sanctions, the effect of these sanctions on the people of Russia, the population. It's already huge. It's, it's already a huge effect. Uh, it will lead to the collapse of, uh, let's say, the middle class in uh, Russia. Uh, it will lead to the, uh, let's say, to the destruction of the future uh, for, I don't know, millions of uh, young people uh, in the country, and uh, it will lead to the social uh, social catastrophe. And I am not sure that the current uh, leadership uh, of uh, Russia can manage the social catastrophe. And so do you uh, think this will lead to a settlement? In, this, in the 10 seconds we have, or in the minute that we have, do you think this could lead press Putin uh, to settle with Ukraine? Uh, I, I, I don't know, in fact, because we see that uh, his decisions are quite irrational, quite irrational. Irrational. And we can discuss it, discuss it uh, in the, let's say, rational way. Yeah. Have you been shocked by what has taken place? Of course, of course, as uh, as millions uh, of people in uh, in in uh, my country. Do you think the protests will continue? Uh, I hope so. Despite of the very uh, very brutal, very aggressive pressure uh, that uh, that we have from the top. Did you flee because of what's taking place? Uh, in fact, I don't want to talk about it okay. much. Ilya Budraitskis, I want to thank you so much for being with us. Ilya Budraitskis is Russian historian and political writer, author of Dissidents Among Dissidents, Ideology, Politics and the Left in Post-Soviet Russia. That does it for our show. Check our website for jobs. I'm Amy Goodman. Stay safe.